So, in the previous class, uh, we discussed about the uh, basic functions of the commercial bank and what are the services the commercial bank give or provide. Uh, here, what we have seen that the commercial banks are so special and they provide uh, different kind of services which are technology based. Mostly the importance was given to the online banking and the credit card operations and all these things. So, today we can discuss or we will discuss certain issues related to the financial statements of the commercial bank. Then further we will see that how the performance of the commercial banks are measured. Uh, if you see in general uh, accounting term, whenever you talk about the financial statements, there are three types of financial statements always we uh, come across. Uh, the financial statements are uh, mostly the uh, balance sheet, uh, then we have uh, the second statement is basically your profit loss account or the income statement and another is basically the cash flow. But from the banking perspective, the uh, cash flow has uh, some different meanings. So, mostly the performance is always considered, always observed, always analyzed from the two financial statement statements that is the balance sheet and the income statement. If you know that what do you mean by the exact balance sheet is? how the balance sheet can be defined. The balance sheet is basically what? It provides the organization's financial condition at a single point of time. So, the if you see that uh, any, any company's balance sheet including the bank's balance sheet, it is always prepared on a particular date, usually the last day of quarter or the year. So, you might have seen that whenever we are talking about a balance sheet, we are talking about like as on 31st March 2018. That means, as on 31st March 2018, what is the financial condition or financial position of that particular company including the bank that is basically reflected through the balance sheet whether it is a bank or any other company that has no difference and only we have to see that the condition of that particular organization, particularly the financial condition of that organization is observed through the different parameters that are different items and that is basically shows that basically shows that the financial position of that company on that particular date. But whenever you talk about the income statement. The income statement basically shows the all major revenues and expenditure, net profit, loss, dividends if at all the company paid uh, and it also the measures the bank's financial performance over a period. It does not show the performance at a particular point of time or at a particular date, but it shows the performance over a period of time. Mostly the period of time is either quarterly or the period of time can be yearly. So, the income statement is a flow concept or over the period of time what is the condition or financial condition of the organization that is reflected through the income statement and whenever we talk about the balance sheet, the balance sheet shows the financial position of the company or position of the bank at a particular date or a particular point of time. Here the point of time means we are talking about a particular date. So, that is the basic differences between these two types of financial statements. Although the cash flow has a different meaning for the banks, but if you talk about the cash flows, the cash flow is basically uh, is always from the three activities. One is your financing activities, whenever we measure the cash flow, it is basically measured through the cash flow can be prepared from the financing activities of the company. Second one is your investment activities, how that money is utilized, investment cash flow and third one is basically your operating cash flow. So, these are the different uh, activities which always we try to observe whenever we are 
defining the uh, cash flow statement of a particular company. But from the banking perspective, we always measure the performance in terms of the balance sheet items and the items which are reflected in the income statements. So, this is the uh, basically what uh, the uh, financial statement of the banks are. And here if you see how the balance sheet, first of all we can discuss about the uh, balance sheet. So, whenever we talk about the balance sheet, the balance sheet of a particular bank is defined uh, is divided all those items is uh, basically in two side one is your liabilities and another side is the assets. There are certain assets and liabilities which are always considered in terms of the balance sheet of a particular organization including the bank. So, now we talk about the liabilities and the assets what are those different let us first discuss about the liabilities then we can come to the assets. Then what are those liabilities? The liabilities is, is the first liability is always for any kind of organization is the share capital. Share capital means here we are referring to the equity capital. Why equity capital is, an li is a liability? The equity capital is a liability because the money which is invested by the different equity holders within that organization, the, they are the owner of the company and the company or the bank has to pay the dividend and also the particular amount of the profit which is arised from that particular investment that is basically should be shared among the uh, individual shareholders or the other type of shareholders who are participating in that particular operations. That is why equity capital is considered as, an, as a liability for the organization. Then we have the reserves and surplus. Reserves and surplus, why we say that reserves and surplus basically is a liability? Because reserves and surplus does not provide any kind of return, which is always there within the organization uh, for some kind of contingency reasons. So, that is why this is also considered as a liability for the bank. Then we have uh, the another liability is the deposits. So, the deposits are basically the uh, major component one of the most important components in terms of the liabilities whenever we are discussing about the banks. And the deposits for uh, uh, the people or the household sector or the business sector who makes the deposits, deposits are the assets for them or deposits are the liability for the banks. Why the deposit is a liability? Because the bank has to pay the interest against the deposits. So, any type of deposit what we are making although this is the major uh, instrument or major resources for the bank for the operation, but still it is considered as a liability for the banks because we pay the interest against these deposits. So, the interest basically interest payments are made against the deposits or the bank has to pay the interest against the deposit that is why deposit is considered as a liability for the banks. As usual you have the borrowings. Uh, any type of long term and short term borrowings, whatever the bank take, either the borrowings can, can come from RBI or the borrowings can come from other type of uh, bank, other type of banks which are existing in the financial system. So, any type of borrowings what the banks take against that borrowings they have to make the interest, they have to pay the interest against that. So, there is a fixed obligations they have because they have to pay the interest and as well as in the end they have to pay also the uh, principal amount. So, because of that the borrowings are basically considered as one of the major liabilities for the banks and as well as the other organization. Then there are some other liabilities short term and long term liabilities and the provisions what the bank keep against any kind of loss. The provisions against any kind of loss depending upon the credit risk. Uh, whenever the bank provides the loans uh, there is some kind of uh, risk involved in that, there are different type of risk involved in that and the major risk what the bank can face that is basically the credit risk. So, to overcome that kind of risk what do the banks do? The banks basically keep certain kind of provisions, loan loss provisions what they keep and the loan loss provisions are basically also considered as the liability because it does not provide any kind of return over the period of time. So, this is also another type of uh, liability always we observe or always we see. So, these are the major liability components 
of the commercial banks. So, here what we have seen that mostly the major type of liability what the commercial bank has that is basically your deposit. So, we have to understand more about the deposits, what are the different type of deposits and how the uh, what are the factors which basically determine the deposit base of the commercial banks. If you see this one, then whenever you talk about the bank deposits, because it is the uh, the maximum component of the total liabilities comes from the deposit base. So, there are two types of deposits broadly, one is demand deposits, another one the term deposits or the time deposits. So, whenever we talk about the demand deposits, the demand deposits again has been divided into two parts, as there are two types of demand deposits, one is current deposits, second one is the savings deposit. That means, you might have uh, already the idea that uh, the people either have a current account in the bank or they can have a savings account in the bank. So, whenever you talk about the current deposits or current account, uh, these are also the checkable accounts, the check can be issued against the current account, but there are no restrictions on amount or the number of withdrawals from these accounts and it does not carry any kind of interest. So, if you are going to open the current account in the bank, then that account will not face any kind of interest. So, you will not be paid any interest against the current accounts, but there are no restrictions for withdrawal of the money in terms of amount and as well as the number of times. So, in n number of times, any number of times you can withdraw the money and also if it is required, you can also withdraw any amount of the money whenever you need. So, that is basically a part of the current deposits and against that the banks basically open the current account. Then we have the savings deposits. The savings deposits uh, is check can be drawn, check can be drawn against that deposits and they that carry generally the interest already 3.5 percent to 4 percent interest it carries and as well as also there are certain restrictions in terms of uh, the amount of money withdrawn and as well as the number of times the money can be withdrawn in a particular period of time. So, that is basically we call it the saving deposits or the savings account what the customer can open with the commercial bank. Then we have the call deposits, uh, they are accepted from the fellow bankers and are repayable on demand, these deposits also carry the interest. The call deposits are not available the regular retail customers, they are basically available for the other banks. Uh, which can have the account with that particular bank and they can also repayable whenever they need or whenever they demand that amount and these deposits also carry certain amount of interest rate. So, these are the part of the uh, uh, part of the demand deposits whatever we have. Then we have the term deposits uh, on we are more popular uh, popularly in, uh, it is known as the fixed deposits or we are more acquainted with the term fixed deposits. So, there are different type of maturity period, the term deposits or the fixed deposits can be made for uh, 2 months, it can be made for 6 months, it can be made for 2 years, 3 years or 1 year like that. So, depending upon the term to maturity, the rate of interest varies. So, the uh, longer the term to maturity, the rate of interest also will be more against that, but it has a certain limit after that the interest rate does not vary. So, these are the part of the term deposits or the fixed deposits uh, and the uh, these are the two ways the deposits are basically defined in terms of the commercial banks. So, then we will see that uh, what are those factors uh, which basically affecting the composition of the bank deposits particularly in India and as well as the other countries. If uh, one first and foremost factor is the national income if national income will increase, then there is a possibility that the deposit base of the bank will increase because the level of income uh, within the household and as well as the other kind of uh, customers who are available in the particular market at that particular point of time that may increase. Expansion of banking facilities in the new areas and new classes of the people, because you see if there are more number of banks and the, there is expansion of the banks and that creates the avenue for the people to make their savings or to create their savings account, there is a possibility that your deposit base may increase. Increase in banking habit 
because every day we all the transactions we are trying to make through online and all kind of digital payments are demand for digital payments are increasing. So, that also uh, make the people increasing their banking habit. So, if the banking habit is more or people are more interested to do the transactions through the banks because of uh, uh, kind of uh, authentic record and as well as it has also hassle free kind of uh, uh, spending or the transactions then also that increase that also will increase the demand for the bank deposits uh, in the system. An increase in the relative rates of return on the deposits. Then you see that whenever the deposit rate is higher than the other type of investments or other type of uh, instrument financial instrument which are available in the financial system, then also people demand for the bank deposits may increase. Increase in deficit financing this is another reason through which uh, also we are uh, always we need more deposits should be there in the bank to cover up that financing whatever we have. And increase in bank credit, if you see that uh, increase in bank credit is, is another, another reason that whenever you talk about the bank credit, the bank credit is basically what the loans. If the loans will increase, then it will increase the money supply already we have explained that a money supply will increase then the investment will increase if the investment will increase then output will increase the if output will increase then the profit of the producer may increase and if the profit will increase automatically that money will again come to the bank as a deposit so that is also another channel through which the deposit deposit base can be increased so there is a relationship between the bank credit or the bank loan against the deposit base. And inflows of deposits from the NRIs, already you know that NRIs are also one of the major sources of uh, the money supply in the financial system. If uh, the inflows are more from the NRIs, then also the non-resident Indians, then the deposit of the commercial banks also, the total deposit base of the commercial banks also increase. Then the growth of substitutes, the other kind of alternatives which are available in this market and as well as the other type of investment alternatives which are available in the market that also decides that how much bank deposits we should we should have. If there are more alternatives are available and that are lucrative and risk free people may be interested to invest their money in terms of those investments or those kind of assets. So, then automatically the deposit base will go down, but if the alternative assets availability is relatively less then what will happen the demand for bank deposits also may increase because people will consider that this is the safest investment what they can make and the amount of return what they get out of this although this is very minimal or it is very less, but still it gives kind of safe return uh, and also increases the saving habits of the people. So, that is why growth of substitutes is very important factor whenever you talk about the composition of the bank deposits or demand and supply of the bank deposits in the particular system. So, these are the different factors which affect the composition of the bank deposits for the commercial bank. Uh, then there are some uh, uh, we are talking about uh, there are other. Uh, so, these are the items which are basically the assets. So, these are the items uh, these are basically the assets with the, uh, with the commercial bank these are the different assets. So, these assets are basically what these are cash in hand balances with the central bank, balances with the other banks, money at call and short notice, balances with the banks which are outside in India, investment in government and other approved securities, bank credit, fixed assets and the other assets. So, whenever we talk about this, we are basically what we are talking about, there are different type of assets because just now we are talking about the liabilities and assets and out of them the major liability of the commercial bank is the deposits. So, there are different type of assets whatever cash the banks have to fulfill their liquidity requirements that is also liability asset for them. Whatever balance they will keep with RBI they get interest against that because of that that is also an one of the assets. Balances with other banks they get the interest out of this because of that this is considered as an asset. Money at call and short notice whatever liquid instruments whatever they have they consider as an asset balances of the banks if they have any, any anything outside India. Uh, there are fixed assets like land, buildings, machinery, 
uh, all these things whatever they have they are considered the fixed assets. But the major assets of the commercial banking system is investment in government and other approved securities and the bank credit. So, these are the basically major assets one is your investments and another one is the bank credit because the loan is one of the major components of the assets and investment is another component of the assets. So, these are the two things what basically we will discuss more that what kind of uh, policies uh, the bank adopt whenever they uh, discuss about investments or they deal with the investments and the bank credit. Uh, if you see that uh, whenever you talk about the investments, the investments uh, can be three types what the banks do. Uh, one is your government of India securities, government securities which are SLR investments or SLR securities. So, minimum amount of uh, investment that is a certain percentage of the total deposit has to be invested in that kind of securities. And other thing is the other approved securities, other approved securities mean there are some uh, certificate of deposits or commercial papers whatever they have. They can be also part of the SLR investments, they can invest in those kind of securities which are relatively very liquid and short term. And another is uh, non approved securities, they can invest in any kind of risky bonds, uh, either it is a corporate bond or any other bond. So, those kind of bonds are basically called the non SLR securities, they cannot be considered as a part of uh, uh, statutory liquidity ratio requirements, but they are considered as the investments. And also they can also invest in the equity market or the stock market. So, these are basically the non approved securities which are basically non SLR securities, but bank always invest in that because the return from those kind of assets are relatively higher and they can maximize the return out of this. And whenever we are talking about uh, uh, loans and advances, there are different kind of loans the commercial bank give. One is your overdrafts or cash credits, they can go for discounting or purchasing the commercial bills and demand and term loans. So, if you see these demand and uh, term loans, these are the two most important uh, type of loan what uh, always we deal with. So, whenever we talk about the loan, the loan can be anything, already we know that the loan can be a can be industrial loan. Why we talk is demand and term loan? Because the demand loans are relatively short term in nature and term loans are relatively long term in nature. So, industrial loan, you have a housing loan, you have the personal loan, you have also the loans related to like other uh, objective like education loan. So, like that for different purposes the loans can be given and some of the loans are very short term in nature that is why they call it the demand, lo uh, demand loans and there are some loans which are very long term for example, the housing loan that can go up to late 20 years, uh, industrial loan also can be given up to 15, 20 years. So, like that you have the vehicle loan also. So, different kind of loans are available and depending upon the term to maturity of that particular loan, we define them whether they are the demand loans or they are the term loans. And that is the major sources of revenue what the commercial banks can generate uh, and the uh, major source of the profit or the income what the commercial bank can generate. So, these are this is, these are the major loans and advances what the commercial banks always use. But whenever we talk about the loans and advances what the commercial bank give. Uh, there is certain policy they adopt, then how basically they provide these loans and what kind of theoretical basis against that. If you see there are different approaches for the bank lending, because this lending activity is based on the different approaches. The one approach called the liquidation approach, another approach is called the going concern approach. What do you mean by the liquidation approach and going concern approach? The liquidation approach is basically what? Uh, whenever the bank provides the loan, they basically look the value of the assets of the borrower as a security for the loan. That means, whenever we take the loan, they see that whenever we are taking the loan, they again they take certain kind of mortgage or collateral against that particular loan. So, if there is a default, then the bank can liquidate those the assets and can recover the money. So, this particular approach is defined as a liquidation approach. So, it implies a short term rather than long term view of the borrower's prospects and usually involves taking a charge of these assets. So, any point of time if your asset value 
is not compatible with the loan what you are taking, then maybe loan may not be granted for that. So, that approach is called the liquidation approach. But whenever we go for the going concern approach, in the going concern approach, the bank basically sees the borrower's ability to repay the loan out of the future cash flows rather than his ability to offer some tangible assets as security for the loan. They see that whether the in the future how much revenue or how much cash flow this particular customer can generate. So, whether is it possible to uh, uh, recover that loan in terms of the cash flow what that particular customer is able to generate in the future. So, in that particular context we see what is the prospect of the outflow or the future cash flow of that particular customer. So, here the banks basically analyze your ability to pay banks does not analyze whatever assets you have and this whether the assets value is compatible with your loan amount what you are demanding. So, this is what the going concern approach uh, for your information the India follows the liquidation approach mostly and US and other countries follows the going concern approach. Some people argue that liquidation approach is a backward looking approach and going, going concern approach is basically a forward looking approach for the commercial banks. So, these are uh, the different approaches for the bank lending and either of these approaches can be followed by the commercial bank. Then whenever they provide the loan, they uh, basically uh, take certain kind of margin uh, in the liquidation approach. So, whenever the loan made by the bank, uh, uh, the loan made by the bank against uh, any kind of security is always less than the value of that security. So, this difference is called the margin. Just now we said whenever in the liquidation approach, whenever we provide the loan, always we consider certain assets as the security or as the collateral. So, whenever we give the collateral, the collateral's value and your loan value, there is a difference and always the value of the collateral should be more than the loan value. So, that amount is called the margin. So, the margin basically differs from security to security and uh, the major principles which determinates it are marketability, their uh, ascertainability of the value, stability of the value and transferability of the title of that particular security. For example, if you see if you are using gold as the instrument then 10 percent is the margin if you are using gold ornaments then it is 20 to 30 percent of the margin, if you are using government and other securities then it is 10 percent, if you are using your equity ordinary shares it is 40 to 50 percent, if you are using preference share it is 25 percent, if it is debenture it is 15 to 20 percent, life insurance policies 90 percent of the surrender value, commodities 25 to 50 percent and any any kind of immovable property that is 50 percent land and all these things if you are using as mortgage then the value of the total land uh, always uh, should be 50 percent uh, always we consider the 50 percent of total that will be sanctioned amount for your loan. So, these are the margins which has been used and why this kind of margin concept is used because to avoid any kind of loss valuation of that particular asset. So, if there is a possibility that valuation of that particular asset may go down. So, depending upon that from the beginning bank take the precautionary approach to uh, keep that particular margin by that any point of time if you loss any if you are the defaulter and the particular asset can be sold in the market then that should not affect the the total uh, amount recovered from that particular loan. So, this is what basically the margin and further we will be discussing about the performance of the commercial bank and how it is measured. Please go through this particular uh, references. Uh, for this particular session. Thank you.